Hey City Center Baptist Church family, it's Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters. Digging deeper question number two this week asks, why do you think both Moses in Deuteronomy 6 and Jesus in Mark 12 included the affirmations of God's oneness? The Shema is the title the Jews have for centuries called the passage from Deuteronomy 6. It comes from the first word in the Hebrew, which means hear. The phrase, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, is the very heart of the Jews' confession of faith. It emphasized that the Lord was to be the sole object of the nation's love, loyalty, and devotion. It also affirmed the Lord was unique among all the so-called gods that existed in Israel's day as they departed from polytheistic Egypt to enter into the promised land that was also swamped with many false gods. In the early days of the nation, until the 70-year exile, Polytheism was the great temptation and stumbling block. The people noticed the objects of worship of the nations they were displacing and became curious. They began to incorporate their practices into their worship and then allow these pagan practices to replace the worship of the Lord who had delivered them from Egyptian slavery. And in the course of time, the nation of Israel became enslaved again, first to pagan idols and then to the pagan nations who defeated them subjugated them, and eventually carried them off into slavery. Both Moses and Jesus affirm the importance of the Shema before continuing to the greatest commandment. By doing so, they both declared that the Lord was to be worshipped as he had revealed himself. Humans are notorious for making gods in their own image. This is the great error of idolatry which, which persists even to today. People of the world want their gods to be like them, to agree with them, to let them alone to live as they please. This false notion has never left our human race. The greatest commandments cannot be obeyed until God is worshiped for who he is, not as we want him to be. We are made in his image, not vice versa. A correct and accurate understanding of God is necessary for people to love him. If people worship false gods and idols, they will find them to be capricious and unstable. It will be impossible to love a God that cannot be trusted. On the other hand, the true God is gracious, merciful, and faithful. He can be fully trusted. His immutable character fosters our love for him. He is consistent with who he says he is. He is always there for us. This foundational belief helped Paul guide young Christians in the pagan city of Corinth as they tried to navigate eating food sacrificed to idols. This principle also helped encourage the church in Ephesus to maintain its oneness in Christ. And it provided the basis for Jesus being the one mediator between God and the sinful human race. It's no wonder we love and adore him and give our sincerest worship. The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. This has been Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters.